Hello, this is Oli, the developer of DrawingBot V3. Um, in this video, I'm going to quickly go over one of the new pathfinding modules, which is adaptive letters, which was added in version 1.5.2. As you can see, this pathfinding module allows you to create drawings out of letters and characters from a font of your choice. Um, so you can see it here it has generated all these little individual characters, um, which when we zoom out form the, uh, the final image. Um, if you've used adaptive um, PFMs before, uh, you'll recognize some of these settings at the top. We have minimum and maximum sample radius. If we increase the maximum sample radius, we're going to increase the spacing between the characters. If we decrease the max sample radius, we're going to uh, decrease the, the distance between all of the individual characters. Um, in general, I don't recommend changing the minimum sample radius. Uh, 0.5 is the best to be um, to give you a good contrast in the final image. If we were to raise it to one, for example, um, we're already limiting how small an individual letter can be, and this results in an image with much less contrast. So we're going to go back to 0.5 here. Um, New in 1.5.2, we can actually adjust the brightness and contrast um, straight away just within the Pathfinder module. So we can slowly just increase the contrast or increase the brightness uh, until we get something we want. Um, so I'm just watching it as it starts and then adjusting it. Um, so you can see there, um, now we're getting quite a good... Um, I might actually decrease the contrast again, actually. Um, but you can see how you can quickly find the balance that you want um, with this. Um, and if we increase decrease the brightness massively, we're going to get many more letters being drawn. So that's brightness and contrast. I'm just going to reset the brightness and set the contrast as 1.4. Um, next, we have the letters portion. Here we can change which characters we want the uh, PFM to use. So for example, we could put in loads of different symbols in here and if I run it again it will only use um, these symbols I've selected to create the final image which is really cool. We can also use regular expression filters um, so we could use a range like a uh, square bracket a a to z um, we run that again now it's just using uh, the alphabet there um, you can look up regular expression filters, um, they're quite common and it's a good way to uh, write out some different character sets without having to write out every individual character. I'm just going to get rid of that. We could um, then also write um, our character filter if we write something like hello and we switch to sequenced. Um, it's all, this will um, try and write our characters in the order. Um, that we've set them here. So that's complete. You can see that it's kind of writing hello in various different orders in different places. It's a bit random, um, but people can have fun trying to work out what you originally wrote. If you want it to be a bit more obvious, you can disable a line rotation and uh, set the max rotation to zero. And what this will do is, in the final result, um, the letters won't be rotated so far off uh, the axis. They'll all be straight, um, which will make it easier to read uh, what you've written. So there we go. Now we can see hello quite a bit more clearly. It's still kind of going in, in random areas, random patterns, but this is kind of what's more fun. It makes it uh, you know less less clear to read straight away. But as you start to look at it, you'll work out what it is. Um, we can also change. So, yeah, that was rotation. A line rotation, when that's enabled, um, it's selecting a rotation, which is um, kind of follows the natural contours of the image. So that's an option. Or we can select our minimum and maximum like we did just then. Um, we can also change the fill size. I'm just going to switch this back to random just because it runs slightly quicker than ordered um, and sequence. Sorry. Um, so we're going to change the fill size now and as you can see then we're getting some cool overlap in shapes um, so we can mess around with that as well I might introduce some rotation again and yeah we're getting some some cool effects here um, and then finally 
we can select which fonts we would like to use. So we have a large selection of SVG fonts. Um, this is thanks to um, Evil Mad Scientists, I believe they're called, which are the, the creators of AxiDraw. I was with Os Oske, um, who works on AxiDraw, kindly let me use these fonts that he had put out as an open source library of fonts. So we have a lot of cool SVG fonts. The advantage of SVG fonts over regular fonts is that you they have much simpler lines. If we zoom in, you can see this is just the L is just literally just two straight lines. Um, and this means that our plotting times are significantly sh shorter. Um, if we look at the vertices here, we've only got um, half a million vertices, which isn't too bad. It will take a little bit of a while to plot um, an adaptive letters drawing, but um, I think it'll be worth it for the final result. Also, we can choose not to use SVG fonts and to choose um, from the fonts that we have installed on our computer. So, for example, we can just use a regular font like Arial. Um, but as you can see, this, this creates many more lines than the regular SVG fonts. Um, we've got a lot more vertices and, yeah, it draws the whole outline of the letter. But, to be fair, the, the, the um, styles with this are also very cool. Um, some fonts will work better than others. Oops. Um, some some fonts will work better than others. Um, so yeah, here's another one you can pick. Um, try try any font on your computer. Some may not run. That's just because of the complexity of the font, and it, it it may run after a while. But some fonts do take a little while to set up. But yeah, that's adaptive letters. Another thing to mention is there's also Voronoi letters. If I run this once. This is just the Voronoi version of adaptive letters. Um, if you're familiar with some of the other adaptive and Voronoi um, PFMs, you'll know that they are kind of related, that there's a Voronoi and an adaptive version of each style. Um, the benefit of Voronoi is that often, um, if you run it for long enough, um, the quality of the final image is often better and the distribution can oftentimes be smoother, but it's not the case for every image. Some images work better as adaptive, some images work better as Voronoi. They're just different approaches to um, positioning the letters. I just also was going to quickly mention that um, in uh, from version 1.5.2, uh, instead of having a point count, you actually have a point density and a point limit for your Voronoi samples. So the point density is... Uh, allows you to, when switching between A3 and A4, the set a point density will give you the same consistent results in each area of that image. So when you switch up to a bigger paper size, your um, design will still work. You won't need to adjust your point count to try and match it anymore. If you'd like to, you can still introduce a point limit, which works again very similar to how it did in previous versions. But now that we have a point density, it's much more easy to uh, define how many letters we would like in our final image so we can decrease or increase and obviously we will result in uh, more or less uh, letters in the final thing um so that's voronoi and adaptive letters um hopefully that was useful um i will be going over some more details of how to get the best um, results out of these pathfinder modules in future videos um so thank you for watching